Welcome to a new year of Highliner News. I'm Eliza. And I'm Michaela. This year we have 15 new students working hard to organize our broadcast. We hope you enjoy this season of Highliner News. Another homecoming is in the books. Michaela brings you the summary of the week's events. Here's a recap on homecoming week. On Monday, the seniors crushed the juniors in Powder Puff 20-0. Tuesday, the Highlander volleyball team beat Fargo South 3-0. Wednesday was an early dismissal, and all the senior classes started to work on their floats. Thursday, the volleyball team lost to Devils Lake 3-1. On Friday, a pep rally was put on by the cheerleaders, followed by a crowning of Sam Byerly and Eliza Johnson. During the pep rally, Joel got led over the press box and learned that we raised over $16,500. After the pep rally, the parade started and the senior class taking another win for the best float. The football team won 6-0 against the Firebirds. To end the week, there was a homecoming dance on Saturday put on by the student council. This is Michaela Walla reporting for Highlander News. Riley and Sadie march into the band room to show what the class is all about. While there are many classes that you're required to take, band is not one of them. This is why Mr. Chellett and the students come back every day. Working with young people every day and watching them grow and get better at what they do and enjoy what they do. It's a little bit of work, but the rewards greatly outweigh the work they put into it once you get good at what you do. The best part of band is just being able to be yourself without having anyone judge you. Mr. Chelland is there and he lets you play whatever you want. The students share advice for new and non-band students. If someone tells you that you sound bad, just keep on trying. It doesn't matter if you sound bad or good. Enough time, you will be good. If you aren't in band right now, but want to be, definitely join because it's a lot of fun. And if you're like a new sixth grader coming in or something, uh, give it a shot. Even if you don't know it's, if it's for you, it's, it should be tried by everyone. New band members, listen to Challen. He knows what he's talking about. This is Sadie and Riley reporting for Highliner News. Pursue your passion has different meanings to most. Jaden and Abby talk to students about what it means to them. Valley City Public School's motto this year is pursue your passion. Mr. Rossma shares his views. Show the world what they love is, uh, is a really powerful thing and I think it makes us all better. Here are some VCHS students explaining what it means to them. Working hard and just doing what you love. Even if it's just in your little free times of the day, I think doing what makes you happy is really important. I guess not listening to any negative vibes people give off to you that are stopping you from pursuing your dreams. To me, pursue your passion means going out and finding that thing that you love to do and giving 100% of it all the time. This is Abby Meyer reporting for Highliner News. All sports have their ups and downs. Natalie and Alyssa tackle the story on this year's football team. After seasons of struggles, the football team has been turning heads this year. This has served as motivation for this team. Really wanted to show people what we're made of and get some wins. That first win, a couple Fridays back when we won in Grafton, first win in almost two years. It was, it was pretty fun. The guys were crazy. We were all having fun time. Highliner football is more than just what you see on Friday nights. It's a hard sport sometimes and uh, we have to practice and we have to remember the guys, try to have fun with the guys, but also we still have uh, to become better football players. Uh, we try to do some fun things with the guys as much as we can, and yet we also want to challenge them to get better every day. Reporting for Highliner News, this is Natalie Lemnis and Alyssa Hatcher. Hard to believe, but most people don't like running at all. Pete Koselnick shows his dedication to health and fitness by running across America. London caught up with him as he ran through our town. Kenya, Alaska to Key West, Florida is 5,266 miles. Pete ran through Valley City on Thursday, September the 26th. He runs an average of 10 hours daily and enjoys every minute. When I was 11 years old, uh, my family and I, we, we drove the Alaska Highway and I wanted to run across America again this year, but uh, do it a little differently than I did it two years ago, do it self-supported. You know, I, I heard about people motorcycling from Alaska to Florida, so I thought, no one's really run it before, so it'd be kind of cool to, to run it and then you know do it all by myself on a 
single journey. So um, yeah, then it kind of just went from there and uh, it's been an amazing journey. And I think the next 40 or so days will be awesome as well, all the way to Key West. People back home are following along and they're excited about my progress. And then, um, you know, every day I, I can look at the map of where I ran that day. Uh, it's also motivating to know I'm getting closer and closer southeast towards Key West. So uh, just lots of little things like that just uh, keep, me, keep me going each day. I've met so many great people, um, seen so many great places. So, uh, you know, it's much more than just uh, an activity for me now. It's, it's really uh, kind of a lifestyle of enjoying uh, vacations and running and uh, seeing different places. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, it consumes a lot of who I am now and it's, it's been a lot of fun. For Highlander News, this is London Dietrich. Since Pete has left Valley City 18 days ago, he has traveled 1,026 miles. He is currently in Marion, Kentucky. So far on his journey, he has ran almost 4,200 miles in 77 days and is about 1,200 miles away from his destination. New to the Counseling Center this year is Mrs. Tottingham. Mara and Kelsey sat down with her to discuss her job. My name is Miss Tottingham and I am the new counselor here at Valley City High School for grades 10 through 12. And I'm also the career development counselor through the Cheyenne Valley Area Vocational and Tech Center. When students need help with a problem, Miss Tottingham explains the steps she goes through to help solve the issue. First thing to do is to ease their tension and to have them relax a little bit just by getting to know them and have the student try to gain some trust with me. And so it's, it's a process. It, things don't happen right away. I think it takes time for somebody to come in and sometimes the problem might not come out right away. It depends on what the problem is. Is it a family problem, problem with a teacher, problem that they're having with a friend or something that they're trying to deal with internally themselves. This is a safe place for all students and I deal with all sorts of issues that might, well, all, for example, academic achievement. What are you doing after school? So career planning, social wellness, emotional well-being. There's no question that I'm going to ask a student that I need information from you or from anybody, it's unless it's gonna help you for self-awareness. For Highliner News, this is Carson Maine. In this edition of Pursue Your Passion, Presley and Haley talked to one BCHS student and his love for the piano. Well, I first started taking piano lessons at five, but I mean, music was just basically a part of my life, you know, like since I was born, so. Okay, so I take piano lessons from the professor at the university. His name is Professor John Letelier. Try to shoot for an hour and a half to two hours a day, but sometimes I go a little longer because I you know, have to yo-yo the time a little bit. So I learn classical songs, but um, sometimes I pick out um, like modern songs or pop songs by ear if I you know, just feel like it. So what I'll do is I'll listen to them on the radio and then I will just basically play them on the piano, just with my ear, no music. Memorization just comes to me basically just like that. So what I'll do is that I'll learn the songs from the backwards. So I'll, so I'll start at the very last line and then I'll work backwards to the start. And then I'll just keep playing it through and then I'll just refine everything. And basically at that point, I basically have all the memorization and any of the other spots that I don't have memorized, I just go back and I keep playing it until it just clicks. Daniel's taking his talent to the next level. I haven't really told a lot of people about this, but I actually, I actually have written a song and I am working on some others. I have some segments that are unfinished, but yeah. For Highlander News, this is Presley Curtis reporting. One of the new faces at BCHS is foreign exchange student Elena. Reporters Eliza and Molly catches up with her while she settles in. Ciao, mi chiamo Elena Origlia, ho 17 anni e vengo dall'Italia. Sono un exchange student negli Stati Uniti e sono arrivata qua circa un mese fa. Questo è il mio primo mese, quindi, negli Stati Uniti. E sono molto emozionata. Elena came to the United States to better her English and to experience something new. Uh, I started learning English when I was six years old. In Italy, we are obliged to study English at school. In Europe, many students 
or in Italy. Many students decide to go uh, in another state to learn English. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to come here not only to learn English, but also because I think it's like an experience that can help me to grow mm -hmm. and to become a better person. This is Elena's first time out of Europe, but she's not a stranger to travel. In Germany, France, Austria, um, Croatia and Switzerland. Every country has something special. Elena's favorite food from Italy is an American favorite too. Pizza. <laughs> She's found a liking for a new food unknown to her. Peanut butter. We have it probably but I've never had it. Elena noticed a big difference when arriving in the US. Everything here is big. Like very big cars are bigger than in Italy, streets are bigger than in Italy. Uh, distance between cities is bigger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Elena gets to experience something new every day. I mean everything is different so I'm oh, every day I'm surprised because of something. From Highliner News, this is Eliza Schooneman. After 31 years of teaching music, Mrs. Zinke continues to share her love of music with her students. At Valley City High School, I'm starting my 11th year, but I'm starting my 31st year of teaching. I love the interaction with kids on a daily basis. I love, um, well, I love music, so I love to sing, and um, it's just really enjoyable for me to teach it to others. During Penny and two VCHS students' years in choir, they enlighten us on some of their favorite parts. Getting a new song and the, the choir starting them, and then the, listening to the finished product. In general, my favorite part about choir is like just like the camaraderie of the, your friends in choir and like just being like a group of really close friends. Cafe, getting to go on more than once and having your own ensembles with your own grade. I have such a feeling of pride and accomplishment and I'm so happy, not just for myself, but for my students who have worked so hard. Um, it's a lot of rehearsal and when it it works, it's just beautiful, and uh, it's, a, it's a real opportunity for um, the choir students to sing. For Highliner News, this is Mara Thompson. Thank you for joining us from Valley City High School for this edition of Highliner News. I'm Michaela, And I'm Eliza.